And we're going to begin with, and ladies, remember, five minutes. And then after those five minutes, we're going to give the younger ones the chance to ask any questions that may be burning. Younger ones, these older people have some amazing knowledge. So I encourage you to write down your questions because you may have a lot to ask them. So Reverend Black, are you ready with your five minute talk for us this morning? Let's glean some nuggets from you. Yes, yes. You may proceed for the next five minutes and we will follow that with Sister Pearl. Following Sister Pearl, we will have Sister Quimby. I saw Sister Sheila just now. She will proceed after Sister Quimby. So, Reverend Black, let's hear your five-minute nugget for us this morning. Okay, well, greetings to everyone. Nice to have seen you on this program today, this afternoon. My name is Reverend Black. I was born in Jamaica, and I'm here in London about 60 years and um, marriage, my marriage is 60 years of marriages and I'm so happy to be here this afternoon and uh, I'm a child of God, I was saved and I've still saved 63 years now, experience of the Lord and uh, I can say the Lord is keeping me very well and everything that I do, I'm depending, I depend on the Lord Jesus and he's always guiding me He's always keeping me. I go by his instructions. And that's why I have to be, you know, very grateful for this privilege today that I can speak to you. And um, I want to say today that the Lord has been really good to me. Very, very good to me. And um, my experience with him is unspeakable. You have to be a child of God of really real child of god you can't be an off if you want to be a real child of god you have to live by his word and go keep his commandments mm -hmm. and be a light that the, the world can look at you and they can see you and when you do look at when they saw you the light they know that you are a child of god and you have to keep his commandments read his words when you read the words you abide by the word and that's what is how today the word kept you and the spirit of God moved through you. And he teaches you how to live, how to walk, and how to, to be an example for others. Praise God. You also have to be on a grace of perseverance. You have to persevere. In everything that you do, you have to have perseverance. In marriages, you have to have perseverance because you go through a lot of temptations, a lot of things you have to go through. And because of that, if you haven't got perseverance, you can't, you can't make it. You will be able to fall by the way because sometimes you have ups and downs and you have to have perseverance. It's grace of perseverance that you can be able to go through and to cope many times with the misunderstanding and many different things that you did not expect it would happen. And it comes on occasionally, but you have to have the grace of God to kept you and to obey his word and he will see you through. Let me see. Okay, okay. Reverend Black. Yeah. Excellent. This morning, one of the things I just want to ask you Reverend Black, just one question, because this morning we are dealing with how to love your husband. So, Reverend yeah. Black, can you give us one nugget before we move on to the next person? Can you give us one nugget about how to love your husband? Immediately after that, Sister Sheila is going to come in and give us some, some thoughts on how to love your husband. So, Reverend Black, just one nugget there on how to love your husband. Right. As I said, you have to have the grace of perseverance. Because you have to go through a lot of perseverance. When you persevere, you can go through a lot of things. Because you'll have ups and downs in your marriages, but you have perseverance. You love to, to keep forever. And you have to learn to respect one another, understand one another. And then your marriage will go through. But you have to have the grace of perseverance. 
That's okay. Excellent. Grace and perseverance coming out right there. And we thank yeah. you for that. Sister Sheila, over to you. How to love your husband. Topic is submission. Submission is not a bad word. In everyday life, submission is necessary to avoid um, friction or conflict. You submit to your boss on the job. You submit to laws of the land. Rules when broken have consequences. Yet God in his wisdom has put a system in place to create harmony in the home. If we obey earthly rulers, how much more must we be obedient to God's precepts? In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 24, and 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, we are told the head of every man is Christ, the head of a wife is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. For me, submission was not easy in my early years of marriage because I did not understand it was a command from God. But I learned it's the only way to have a healthy marriage and mm -hmm. home. We cannot be the head or usurp authority over the head. Our role, sorry, our role is to partner with our husbands to bring out the best in him and choose the right words, the right tone of voice and non-verbals when communicating with him to improve, not hinder his leadership role. Once the chain of command is maintained, we will have a happy, healthy marriage because God says so. And when challenges come, when nothing else works, we have the weapon of prayer. Always pray and cover your spouse with the blood of Jesus. And so love him that he will be eager to return home to be embraced and affirmed by his lover, friend, and partner. Friends, our husbands have a lot to cope with in the workplace. Don't let him come home to another boss. <laughs> <laughs> Give it chance to love. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I nearly finished. Do your part to play in the anatomy of marriage and just do it. Because you have Jesus, Holy Spirit, and God as your partners. Can't go wrong. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sheila. So, ladies, we're hearing how we need to function as younger women in our marriages. How we need to love our husbands. Sister Pearl, over to you. Thank you. Am I unmuted? All right. Thank, you, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Sheila, you made me laugh there. <laughs> he, doesn't want to, he doesn't need to come home to another boss. You have to excuse me for interrupting you here, but I can't, I can't laugh easy. <laughs> that was a deep that one. Good. That is good ministry. <laughs> yeah, that was good ministry. That was good. Um, I, I I like to think of I think of, of life as as seasons, you know. I'm almost seventy eight, um, so I'm talking about seasons when I think about entering into marriage at the age of eighteen, going on nineteen. We are just a couple of days away from our fifty ninth wedding anniversary, and for a season, for a period of time the anniversaries were like just uh, a number to celebrate. It's like, wow, this is another, a bigger one than the last one. Um, but that is not what life really is. Um, there, there's an author that says life is a series of renewals. It took a long time for me to understand about the renewal um, part. Of course, the, the word of God tells us that if we abide in, in, in him, in John 15, and his words abide in us, you, you know, you, you talk about the renewal. There is no, um, um, we, we can't give life unless we are receiving life, you know. And uh, I think of, of, of God in renewing us 
you, you know, about they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Sometimes we want the renewal, but we're not doing the abiding. We're not, we don't, we don't want to do the work that will bring the, the benefit of what we're looking for. And everybody wants to be happy. Some people are saying, well, you know, if I can only have a, a spouse, if I only have a husband, I would be happy. Okay, so you get that and you're not happy. And then if I could only have a child, I would be happy and you get that and you don't. If I could only have a house, if I could only have this. I, I, so we just go ahead acquiring things and true happiness doesn't come from any of those. So sometimes we could come to the end of life and um, it, it, it amounts to nothing. It's like, well, the scripture tells us life is a vapor. So, you know, we, we experience the evaporating of the substance that we have acquired over the years. And um, how to love your husband, I found that to be a very provoking question, very good question, but it is one that God answers. And um, I asked my husband that last night. I wouldn't tell you the answer <laughs> that he gave me. But um, it is, it is um, we need to pay attention. And, and it's something that we have to learn how to do. It is not an instruction that we have to be given. And then we have to go try to find it. I grew up in, a, in, a, in, a, in an era where the older woman didn't do what we are doing here today. What we are doing here today is, I am telling you, this is going to augur well if, if life tarries for a future generation of women who are going to be strong and robust and, and godly and, and um, you know, all, all the things that God, God is doing in our lives. But I grew up in an era where women just went about their business and, um, Everybody knew how to smile and everybody knew how to, to make it look good. You know, when you look through your window and you saw your neighbor, or you came out your door and you, you were on your way to work. And everybody had a pretty exterior, but it covered a lot of pain. It, it, it covered a lot of, of unrealness. And, and um, I think it is, it is self-defeating. To, to, to waste years um, going down that particular road. We need to know that God promises us abundant life and we can have that in the marriage. The marriage can be very fruitful. It can be, it can be very um, life-giving where you can look at your spouse across the table and you can give life to him or to her, you, you know, well, him in this case, because we're talking to women, um, to, to our husbands, that we can, we can make sure that what we're doing is we're doing it with our own husbands and, and that, that thing. When we can, we have to consider the mandate to love our husbands without measuring the height and depth, the weight or the width of that yeah, you know, it, it is like a, like a tall order. That is too tall an order. Um, when we are young, we think about what about me? What, what do you want to tell him to tell, to do, you know, um, to me? How does he make me happy? Uh, you know, we, we tend to measure things. We want to know what I'm going to get out of this, this investment. And I think we get more when we learn to give. And when I think of, of Jesus and his sacrificial giving, he who had no sin became sin for us. And I think of, of, of he dying for us who didn't even know what we, he was dying for or about. That is the kind of love that God wants us to have for our spouses. And that is life giving. That is what will bring the energy. As a wife, I have to tell myself I was made for this. And nobody has to convince me what, what I need to do. I was made for this. Um, I, I, am, I am what and I am who my husband needs. I have to tell myself this. I wish I knew the, what I'm saying to you, I wish I knew, <laughs> knew that when, when we started marriage. I wish we knew that. I wish, we, wish somebody had told me that because uh, I would have had seasons where I wondered 
when he's going to come around to understanding what I'm trying to say or what, what I'm trying to explain, um, why it is I have to cross the threshold and, and be the one to meet those needs. Um, and, and nobody comes knocking at my door or what it might be, you understand? But so I'm saying, I'm talking from a place now where, where God has taught me some things and where God in his wisdom has given me the uh, 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 ability now to be asked to share with you some of the nuggets that um, have made a difference in my life. I, um, validation, when I was looking for validation, I didn't know at that early stage that validation did not come from my spouse. It came from God. It is who God says I am. When I know who I am in God, I can give my husband everything that he, he requires, everything that will make his life complete and happy. Um, it comes from God first. So God validates me. I must know God. I must know his word. And I can let my faith lead me to trust God before I take that. Um, I, I, I'm looking at my notes and I think I'm a little distracted by my notes. Let me not look at my notes. I've been speaking to you from my heart. And I also want to be guided as far as my time is concerned because I am full, I have more inside of me than I am able to give in a five minutes. So let me pause and see where I should go from here. Maria, you tell me what I need to do. Sister Pearl, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, we're gonna pause there. I am sure these lovely young wives, Selena, I'm seeing you, Colleen. I saw Jessica and Chanel earlier. Do you have any questions for these amazing ladies? We heard about validation coming from God. One of the things that I especially picked out just now, for me, that was in, uh, amazing. I was made for this. Yeah. How many wives say that? How many wives recognize that you are in this position and therefore you were made for such a position? So younger ladies, um, you want to unmute your mic and um, one by one, you can ask any questions to these amazing older ladies and see where we can go from there. We're going to just take one question from each of you and you can say who your question is targeted towards. If you have a specific question for a specific lady or if it is a general question. a beautiful stage in your marriage and congratulations for making eight years of wonderful and two children i remember being nine years married and i couldn't find the child i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't conceive i couldn't you know so you understand how blessed you are and i i hear that keyword me time i, I understand what it means but it really is god time you want because that is what refreshes and renews you um, you understand, your, your me time is getting your nails done and getting your hair cut and getting your, that's your me time. But you, you can have all that done. And if you're not refreshed from the inside, from your, from your, your relationship and your walk with God, all that is vain. So see your, your present condition with your two lovely children. See that you were made for that. See, see that as part of your assignment. The season that you are in is your marriage, your children, and God is the one who will understand and reveal to you what you need to do. But tell yourself, I was made for this. These children are a blessing. Teach me how to guide them, Lord. You can talk to God all day long. And, and in everything, washing socks, you're praying for those feet, you understand, and you're renewing yourself because you're not saying, oh gosh, these socks again. You, you understand what I'm saying? So it has to do with your attitude and it has to do with your acceptance to, to where you are. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. If, if I can, if, if I can give you a window into what my 
eight years of marriage was. Tears were my meat night and day. <laughs> I wish I had a group like this that I could say, what do I do? How do I handle this? So I'm saying celebrate. Every day is a new beginning and God has blessed you. Excellent. Any other questions from the younger ladies? Any other younger ladies questions? Okay, I'm going to give the opportunity for one of our other older ladies on the platform to weigh in on that same issue that Colleen has spoken about. Sister Pearl gave her some good nuggets there, you know. If, if this is a good time to enjoy. Any other ladies would like to speak on that particular question, which Colleen asked? Anyone? Okay, you need to unmute there for Sister Velma. I can see her trying to speak there. Yes, um, it's nice to hear. And moreover, you have mentioned you want fasting and prayer, which is one of the greatest weapons in a Christian's life to go through. And as you heard the, the really word of God, you said, my God's grace is sufficient to keep you. And if you obey his word and just wait upon him, the Psalmist David, when he said, wait upon the Lord and be of good courage. It might be very hard and you might be waiting for a long, long time, but you keep on waiting because once you, God saw the desires of your heart and you keep on trusting him and wait upon him and don't go slack your riding, God will see you through. Don't give up and he will see you through. It might be long, but wait upon him because you are on the right track, fasting and prayer. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Okay, Sister Pearl, there's something else that you wanted to say before we went into our question and answer segment. You may proceed from there. You un Unmute, Sister Pearl. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Thank you. Um. I think if we, we can spend more time like like Reverend Brown, is it? Yeah, we can spend more time in prayer. I, I, I said in, in a short way just now about a season in my life. It was a long season where tears were my meat night and day. But what I did not realize is I was setting a pattern of response to problems. And without instruction, um, the problems would change and I would have set a pattern of response. That was unwise because God's word is very clear as to what to do in the time of trouble. What we have to do, call upon him in the time of trouble. He will hear and he will answer. But I was, okay, well, I was getting, you know, I was using, I'm saying, I'm seeing in the Bible where this one cried unto the Lord. So, what I am doing isn't that what isn't that the same? But it wasn't the same. Like, where's the faith that comes with the tears? <laughs> the faith was absent. The faith was like, God, you forget me, God, you know. And I was like, you know, there was there was room to blame God. There was room to say, God, you've forgotten me. When God was very clear, I have engraved you in the palm of my hand. I will never fail you. I will never forsake you. So instead of concentrating on God and his faithful promises, I was focusing on myself and my pain. That was a long season. That was a dark period of my life. Um, that is, I want to spare you that. <laughs> Let me put it that way. I want to spare you that by telling you that is futile it doesn't it doesn't bear healthy fruit uh, you want you want the kind of fruit that will remain that that your offspring can can inherit that you can pass on to another generation um that, that is it the um 
so the, the validation, get to know God, that is where he is going to renew your strength. Keep the focus on your marriage, your spouse. Don't look next door, though. Don't, this is here. Peter is the only person I know who walked on water in the middle of the ocean. Jesus walked on water. He could do it again. Right? And what God wants us to remember is that Jesus is the master of the wind and the waves. He's also the master of every season in our lives. You know, I do not know why the elder woman in older days kept their pain private. Not that you have to make it public, but did they get any lessons out of the pain? We have to, we have to, we have to glean lessons from the thing. It mustn't be empty where you, you suffer and you gain nothing. Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. When we suffer, we must come away with a lesson. What is the lesson? Make sure that we are noting, noting it and make sure that we do not pass that way again, that we can build on the lessons that we have learned and we could face the next storm better prepared than the past. We have to... Um, We have to learn to trust God who may require us to take him at his word and to step out of the boat or to cast our net on the other side. So if we are not, if we are doubting him every step of the way, if we are questioning him every step of the way without going in trust. So we need to develop a, a pattern of, a, we need to practice our faith. We say, I believe God. Okay, believe him in, in and out of season so we can get the benefit of the lesson and the season that we are in. I will stop now to give somebody else a chance. Thank you so much, Sister Pearl. Ladies, ladies, the other, um, all the ladies, we want you to weigh in on that and share with us some more nuggets about loving your husband because we recognize that that is not always easy. I am sure you would have had times when you wanted to drop everything and just run and leave. I am sure. You can't tell me there were not times when you did not feel like giving up, when you did not feel like letting go. What kept you? What held you there? I want to hear from some of you other ladies. What kept you in the marriage all these years? What were some of the things that, what some of the nuggets that sustained you when you felt like throwing in the towel? There must have been moments like that because we know there are two personalities coming together to make that marriage, that family work. I want to hear from you some of those crucial things that made you stay and that made your marriage what it has been and what it is today. So some of you ladies can unmute Sister Sheila, Sister Velma, some of the other older ladies in the chat, Sister Goddard. I want to hear from you so that we can glean and stay at what has helped you to endure and enjoy. Not just endure, but unmute your mic speaking with us. Sister Velma, go ahead. Yeah. That's a very important question. What kept my, my marriage for so long? Haven't been the grace of God. I wouldn't be able to keep up. Because whenever time the trials and the testing comes, I just talk to the Father which is in heaven. I prayed. And the Spirit of God kept me. He teaches me how to overcome the thing that I'm going through. If something happened, you know, in my marriage life, I said, Lord, I'm going to move out. I'm going to do this. The Spirit of God rebuked me and said, no, you can't do that. Inside, there's a inner, inner spirit speaking within me. I said, you can't do that. And then it just vanished away. Sometimes it gave me a song, a verse of scripture, or something, some encouraging word. But I can't go back. So that is what kept me alive. 
the grace of God, which is in you, the spirit of God within you. And if you live close to God and pray daily and obey his word, you can never lose because he never fails. He's always answering your prayers. Don't care how long, as I said, he's always answering. And that's why I'm here today and say to you, keep on trusting God and read his word and obey his word and live by the word and you will never go wrong. So we heard from Sister Black. We understand that it was the grace of God. The grace of God allowed her to stay and the spirit of the living God within her is what kept her there. Sister Sheila, are you going to weigh in on this one for us? Okay. Well, my, um, because, well, um, I was married and, um, I have two children. My, they are 12 years apart. So I was fortunate. I was employed, but I was fortunate uh, to have people help me take care of my, of my children when they were, when they were small. I had my sister who take care of my son. And uh, that uh, took, out, took a lot of the stress out of um, being um, of parenting because she did the nurturing more than I did because most of the time I was unavailable. And um, challenges will come. And uh, Things were going very good in my marriage until my husband answered a call to ministry. I'm saying that because I was so accustomed to him being around and we're doing everything together and we come from work, we'll cook together, you know, we'll do the chair, the chores and all of that. And uh, when he got the call to ministry and he answered the call, it was different. And I also shed many tears because I felt that I had to do everything alone. I had to get up in the morning, go to work, drop the children, drop my son off to my, my sister, go to work, come home, cook, do whatever was needful for the children, teach them the lesson. And it, you know, it, was, it was becoming a bit burdensome because I was saying to myself that Why I have to do this all by myself? But my husband, he was so involved in ministry. And then because he was bivocational, when he comes from work, he will go out and do ministry. Because he felt obligated, you know, not just to be there for the people on weekends, but all during the week he would go. After he comes from work, he would go and do ministry. So one day I heard him saying to the Lord, I heard him say, Father, I am doing your work. And I'm, I'm leaving it up to you to take care of my family. And um, like your sister said, it's by the grace of God. And uh, when you dwell on the negative, it affects you emotionally. So. Know that God loves you. He's on your side. He's the one who ordained marriage. He's the one who chose your spouse, who brought you together in the first place. And if we believe him enough, he will keep that which he called as and bonded as husband and wife. There is not a marriage that ha that does that that the sale truth that doesn't have challenges. And sometimes it could be so overbearing because in the midst of all of that, you know, I had a son who used to get fits. Um, when he was born, he was, because, um, because I was getting problems when he birth in, they had to use the forceps. And because of that, he had a, he born with a lump on his head. And I don't know if they damaged a part of his brain, but he used to be getting fits all the time. So, he will, nine out of 10 days, he will have fever. 
and then he will get the fits and then we'll have to run to the doctor and it was it was so much and i was saying to the lord um lord heal my son and i said lord with all that we he is going through you make him the most intelligent child in the world and he really did overcome the fits and not boasting but he is such an intelligent child and he's such a successful child and on the contrary there was a woman who was working with me who was my boss and she had the same issue with her son and her husband was a pharmacist and you know she will get calls on the job just like i will get calls on the job about our children and her son turned out to be a vegetable and uh, so through it all you love lord the lord you you serve him he work things out in your life for your good and sometimes he allow things to happen in your life so you will be a source of encouragement to others okay so the sailing will not always be smooth storms will arise you will have to go through different situations but god is in it with you and this too will pass your children will get big my beloved daughter and uh, you will have when you feel that you need the alone time talk to your husband ask me to you take a day off and stay sit with your children and you get a whole day to yourself to revive and refresh and and be strengthened and there are other ways you could do it too you could ask a, a relative to come and babysit for you one day so that you could get refreshed okay so that's my small contribution this one wow we serve an amazing god amen and amen no matter what we are going through no matter how the storm is raging we can definitely say that in the midst of the storm we can still find something to smile at in the midst of the storm and we understand that when we remain faithful to God what an awesome testimony sister Sheila has look what the lord has done for her as a result of her still trusting god her son is who she asked god for him to be you know the beginning stages would have been rough but god so in the midst of every situation we know that there is a but god but god no matter what we are going through we're hearing coming out from these lovely ladies the grace of god has been upon their lives the grace of god has been upon our marriages the grace of god has been upon their children so therefore god did it for them so he can do it for us in this season so for that we are indeed grateful is there any other all the lady who would like to weigh in on this particular topic how to love your husband this is the opportunity before we go to our closing moments any other ladies all the ladies want to talk about this one i see donna me excellent yes. we're going to come to you now honey and after donna me has spoken i'm asking younger ladies you do not want to leave this platform with questions that are on your mind and you are not able to ask you have the opportunity immediately after donna me has spoken to ask those burning questions that has been plaguing your mind since you've been married donna me over to you okay um help me most amidst the, the difficulties that married life will bring I think it's my deep desire to please God. I really always had a very deep desire to please God. And I knew that in order to please God, I would have to to be a better wife to my husband. And you know with some of some of us women when we get married, I got married pretty young. I was 20 years old and my husband was just 21. Um we were very young but we loved each other. But as we grew in our marriage you realize okay there are some things he didn't like about me the way I did things and some things I didn't like about him and we did things and it, it was a fight for me I wanted to please God and so there was this 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 constant this internal fight between wanting to please God and wanting what I wanted I I hope you understand that there's that part of us that ego egotistical part of us we want what we want 
and we are married to this guy and we want him to be the person that we expect him to be. And I realized that it couldn't be so. In fact, this submission, learning to submit, took me a lot of years and prayers because I read it in the Bible. I knew it was biblical. I, I understood and accepted the part about husbands love your wife. I, I wanted him to love me. But I realized, and as I said, it took me years and prayers. I realized that in order for this love to be what it ought to be, I had to do my part, which was submitting. It was not easy. It was not easy because, as I said, it was that part of me. I just wanted what I wanted. I wanted him to be who I wanted him to be. And to tell the truth, I used to pray. I prayed to God that he would bring me to the point where I could love my husband so deeply that I would overlook those things that I saw as flaws. And later on, I came to accept that, wait a minute, but you have flaws too, and he has to be able to overlook it. And I truly thank God, but first of all, for that desire that he placed in me to please him. I always say it is God first, my husband is after. And I believe this helped me and has helped us as a, as a, as a couple to truly learn to love each other the way God would have us to love each other. And it has helped us, as I was speaking to Ruth when she asked me this, and she liked the word, so I want to use it here, to navigate this journey of marriage for next month will be 46 years. And I give all praise and glory to God. Young woman, it will be a struggle, but learn to submit learn submission, ask the Holy Spirit of God to help you to submit. And when you submit, it will be so much easier for your husband to love in the way that he ought to love. Thank you for the opportunity. Amen. Submit. Submit. That word stood out right there. Submit. We also want you to understand that the husbands submit to God. And when they submit to God, the submission of the wife is even easier to them. So we want to encourage you wives, younger wives, continue to pray for your husbands. Not only that you submit to them, but they as husbands submit to God. That is of paramount importance in our marriages. Younger ladies, this is your opportunity. Any questions? Younger ladies on the platform, I see you there. Any questions for these lovely ladies? I see a hand, go ahead. Thank you so much for sharing so freely and openly. Donna Me, where are you, my dear? I want to see you there. I yes, want you to, welcome. excellent. I want you to pray. And also give her a word of encouragement because I am hearing trust issues coming out there because of whatever mistakes would have happened in the past. She's also a mother of five children. I think that's what I heard. And they've been married for nine years and she's struggling with submission. So we understand a set of issues coming out there. I want you to speak to her and also give prayer for her. We can pause for that because it is important that we understand that that's why we are here. So, Donna Mee, can you go ahead? Um, yes. First of all, um, I want to remind you something that I said that it took me many years and a lot of praying. It, it, it didn't come easy to me, this thing about submit submission. So, I want you to give yourself, I think, in fact, give God through his Holy Spirit, the time to work on you, but you have to be willing. As I said, I always had a very deep desire to please God. And that is what held me. I would make mistakes. I would go back, as you yourself mentioned, but I would pray and I would trust God. And eventually God brought me to a place of submission. I'm not saying that there are times when I don't still try to get my own way. That, that whole thing in me, it kicks back up. But generally speaking, you continue to pray. 
if you if you feel that your desire to do what God says is not what it ought to be, tell him that he knows anyway. And ask him and allow him the time to work in you. He is a gracious God. Let me just pray for you. Father, we bow in your holy presence this morning. And we thank you, Lord, that you are a God that we could approach. You are approachable. You are loving. You are merciful. There is not one single thing that we cannot bring before you. And I come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. And I bring your daughter. She has spoken to us freely. And Father, you are aware of her, her present. You are aware of her past. You know her husband, children, the home situations. You know, Father, the things that would, would grate on her and that may also grate on her husband. But Father, her presence here indicates that she wants to learn how to be a better wife, a wife that is pleasing to God and to her husband. And so, Father, I bring her, I bring her struggles, her daily struggles, dear Lord. I bring them before you in full faith and confidence that you are going to help her, Lord. Help her to persevere so that she would be able to see the fruits of perseverance. Father, I pray your blessing upon this young woman. I pray your blessing upon her husband and her children. I know, Lord, that you are going to help her in the many tasks that seem so many things. She has to, to multitask and do so many things in the home. But help her, Father, to know that she can call on you, praying without ceasing. That is what it is. Call upon you while she is doing her daily tasks so that the tasks will seem lighter and that the tasks will become tasks of love. I cover her in the name of Jesus. And I know, Father, I have full confidence that once she keeps her eyes fixed on you, that you would allow her to experience the peace and the love and the joy that can come in a marriage that is open to God. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for you and we are here for you. We will continue to walk with you on this journey. You are not alone. You are not alone. Yes, Sister Velma, I see you have something there to say. Sister Marie, no, it's, it's, um, it's Pastor Freddie here. Reverend Brown, good to see you. Welcome, sir. Blessing. Listen, th this is for, um, uh, th th there are 168 hours in a week from Sunday to, to Saturday. Um, what, what I'd like you to do is to choose two hours in the week specifically for you whereby you make an appointment you put an appointment in your diary whereby you tell the children and you inform your husband that those two hours are yours you can go for a walk you can go for a workout you can breathe you can watch tv whatever but those two hours in the week are yours you put a reminder on the on the refrigerator you remind your husband you remind your children these two hours our uh, mummies, they are sacrosanct. Begin to implement that and let everybody know that that, 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 that that is how it has to be. Because it sounds like you're working from empty and every now and then you have to fill up your well. Yeah. And so if you have those two hours and if you do, and whatever you do in that time, whether you pray, whether you read your Bible, whether you go for a walk, whether you breathe, whatever it is, but you, you, you can't work from empty. And oftentimes as wives, what, what you tend to do is you get overwhelmed and you try to work from empty. Um, but make sure those two hours are yours and sacrosanct. And let, us, and let us know how it goes. That's it. Thank you, Reverend Brown. Thank you very much. Those two hours a week, you can break it up into 30-minute intervals if you so desire, however you choose to work it out. We know that when we are working from empty, we go from empty to empty to empty to emptier until we can't go anymore. And we don't want that for any of us. So however you choose to break up your two hours a week, just write it and we'll go from there.
Okay, who's gonna tackle that question for us? Um, I, I while you were speaking, I thought about the the, the, the frontline workers, and I think about the, the rescuers in this um, building collapse that took place just recently in another country. I think of these the, the, these these people who are on the front line and face with things, and I wonder what their home life is like. I, I think I see them doing some overbearing things, and I see I think of them coming home um, to to more demands, and that is why I laughed as as much as I did when 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 Sheila talked about it. he doesn't want to leave a boss and come home and meet a boss, but I want to be very strategic in answering. When I looked at those rescuers, I thought of them. Um, hoping that they had compassionate partners who would receive them after a day of so much trauma, you know, unexpected things. Okay, they are rescuers, but but when they come home and they have to to face um, the, the, the measure of their contribution, it could be overwhelming. Now, if you want to get more in later in later years, because that's what you're doing right now, you need to watch the ingredients that you're putting into your marriage. And we, instead of instead of saying that he needs to to learn how to balance and you learn and and those sorts of things, look at the way we look at the words that we use. And see if our words are affirming and, um, you know, um, and and embracing and 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 the kind of things that make a person feel worth living and worthy of of your love. Let me put it this way, <laughs> because th that is the essence. Um, do not measure another person's contribution on your scale. Don't don't do it. Our scales don't weigh, don't weigh properly. Um, we need to be able to say, you know, uh, it, it, you might have once a week. You might you, you might get the help that you need. What thanks did you give for that once a week? Or do you say, well, you always you never watch the words that we use and make sure that we are we are affirming and we are. Um, celebrating what we want to duplicate. I'm not sure I'm saying it right. But um, while somebody was speaking earlier about the children, nine years, five, five children, I, I could can't I can't imagine that, but I could understand it. Um, uh, my mother had 14 pregnancies. She raised it. 11 children, you know, the rest of them didn't, didn't, didn't live. But I think about Susanna Wesley, and I think of her making time. Uh, you know, Reverend Brown mentioned about taking time for yourself. Um, but I think about Susanna Wesley, who was the mother of Charles and John Wesley, who are the founders of the Wesleyan, um, the Methodist uh, Church. You can do your research on that. But the thing about it is, as a woman who had lots of children, what she did was well, she she had a date with these children. She took one time one child probably a day, and said, "This is my appointment with this child. I'm going to I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to find out what he likes. I'm going to just spend time to grow this child and to attend. And look what she gave to the world." John and Charles Wesley. I do not know what our contribution today is going to produce tomorrow, but we have to have faith in what we are doing today. And when I think about, you know, we could talk about children, you know, this 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 seed that came from our husband's loins that grew within us. So we are bearers of seed. So, you know, it is more than just having all these children and, and and so I'm not saying that that's what you're saying, but I'm saying let us celebrate every moment. Let us take life as it comes and say, God, I thank you for the breath of this moment. I thank you for what, show me how to maximize the little that you have, that you've, well, you don't even want to say, God, you've given me little, you've given me much. I need to look at it 
differently so I can learn how to celebrate what you have given me. And I'm done. <laughs> Is there any other older? Thank you so very much, Sister Pearl. We glean some nuggets there. Do not measure another person's contribution on your own skills. Celebrate every moment. And who rescue the rescuers. So when your husband comes home, you know, he wants to come home to loving arms. He wants to come home to a soft embrace after being at work a whole day. We understand that, you know, sometimes the pressures in the home might not be easy, but when he comes home, he still wants to come home to that loving home. Home should be a place of solace, a place where you can feel comforted and not a place where you don't want to come home. Home should always be a place of solace. So we want to make sure that that's what our homes are for our husbands, that when they come, they can find comfort and rescue in the home. Is there any other older lady who would like to weigh in on this before we go into our closing moments? It's an excellent, excellent topic. It's an excellent point that we would love to hear from you. Or is there any other younger ladies with any other questions that are burning on them and they want to ask? I see you, Reverend Brown. Uh, you, you, you might make um, a time to sit with your husband, uh, if at all possible, and, and ask him, um, have an inquiry, what, what, what does he want? Yeah. What, what would work for him when he comes home from work? And, and just, just see what the response will be. You, you won't be able to predict the result, but just see what, what the, the, the result will be, because it, it sounds like you, you have an expectation of him when he comes home from work, which is, which is what it is. An expectation is an expectation. It's not right, it's not wrong, it is what it is. But um, if you're able to sit with him and ask him, um, honey, when, when you come home from work, what, what do you want to happen? How can I make you happy? And just see what happens. That's it. And Mom, Mom Black wants to say something as yes, well. Yes, that's my final word as well. I think the best thing when, she, when he comes in from work, don't care how tired he is, just say to him, let us pray. Because you're at home all day with the children and have the pressure, and you have the, the right to seek God, and you pray to God, and ask him to give you the courage. And as he come in, and he start to sit down, say, Honey, let us pray. And I'm sure you won't resist from doing that. And if you keep on in that area, just pray and trust God. I'm sure there will be changes because this life will affect the children. And these are, these are the things what you find children are getting so much in the social area, which you don't want to. So if you continue to ask the Lord to help you, to show him that love of prayer, I'm sure it will work. God bless you. Thank you very much, Reverend Brown and Sister Velma. We are going to take two more. I see two more hands. Let's take Selena, one of our younger lovely ladies. Let's take your question. And after that, we will be followed by Joan. Go ahead, Selena. Unmute and go ahead. Sister Pearl, you want to answer, go right ahead. You say um, plans, and I'm hearing his ministry. You are, uh, to have peace, you will have to work towards getting together where his ministry becomes your ministry. Um, where... It, it ceases to be a competing need um, where, where, where you can contribute by, by affirming the call of God in his life to do what he's doing. You don't have to understand it. 
um, you, you don't have to understand, but I can under, I can hear this sacrifice. I can hear, but understand you at the beginning where you're growing together and growth is painful sometimes, but it is happening and you're moving in the right direction because you're asking the right question. You are saying, how can I help him? That's a very good question. And it is well said. So you are, uh, I can see this being healed by exposing it where you can, you can get um, some clarification. You actually aerated the problem. So it is no longer a problem. It is now, Lord, help me to see it from his point of view. Okay, I, I, I don't want this answer to be long. I'm, I'm a writer. I need airspace. I need quiet. My husband is an electronic engineer. His, he has heterodynes going. He has radios. You heard some inter interference. I am in his room. But you understand. So we are, we are poles apart as to what we need to do the things and to produce the, the fruit of our calling. What, I, what, what has happened is that God uh, when, when I get called to do something, he goes and he does he does it with me. When he gets called to do something, I go and I do it with him. It becomes our calling. And this is what has brought us through the years to a better place than when we first started. When we first started, it was a pausing quote. How am I going to hear myself when this radio is going? Or that, that sort of stuff. <laughs> I, I just thought I would share that, but uh, you are in a good place, darling, and you're in a good, you're in good company, a company of older women who have learned some things through the things that we have suffered, and I pray that you would learn something this morning. God bless you. Thank you so very much, Sister Pearl. What we want to do right now is want to ask Sister Sheila, Sister Black, and Sister Pearl. And Donna, me, if you're still there, to just give us one closing nugget from each of you who would have shared with us this morning. One closing nugget about loving your husband as we wrap up. So we're going to have Sister Black, Sister Sheila, Sister Pearl, and Sister Donna, me, if you're still there. One closing nugget from each of you, one after the next. Uh, Sister Black. Well, I would advise you to keep on trusting and keep on, you know, lift your faith up. Whatever you pray about, don't go down on your faith because God will answer your prayers. He has done it for me and he has done it for others. And what he has done for me, he'll do it for you. Don't give up. Just keep on praying. As a child of God, don't let the enemy tell you that this is the end. There's never be an end for anything. God is your refuge and is your strength in the very present help in trouble and in need. So God bless you. I just want to tell you that um, talk to your husband or your spouse about changes in your marriage. And um, choosing the time and location is very important. So make sure that... Um, Things are in, a, in, in emotionally, it's in a good state. Maybe after you have just had intimate moments and uh, let him know with the right words you, the, how exactly you feel and what is affecting you. Because sometimes we feel that our husbands are prophets and they will know everything that we are going through. But in fact, they don't. So talk to him and uh, let him know that what is affecting you and uh, so you could deal with it. So you could see what he could do to help alleviate your struggles and your pain and your suffering. And I think that works. Thank you, Donna Me, go ahead. Yes, well, uh, just to reiterate what Sister Sheila said, 
because I had I wrote it down here. Communication, I think, is vital. You need to communicate with your husband. And I think something else, uh, something that is probably more practical too, is to concentrate, maybe to write it down. Write down all the strengths, the things that you love about your husband and concentrate on those things. And I think that those things will help you to be able to overlook because overlooking comes before, long before understanding to overlook some of the negative things that you are seeing that you don't like. And I think when you write down the strengths, you will realize, wow, there is a lot in this man that I should love as God would want me to love. God bless you. Amen, Sister Pearl. The Psalm 62 verse 5 says, My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. It is my experience that our disappointments in life and our frustrations in life come about because of our expectations. Um, you know, we say, well, I didn't expect you to do so and so, or I expected you to do so and so. So we rise and fall because of our own expectations. The psalmist puts it in perspective and he says, my soul wait thou only upon God for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. So I think we, we spend too much time uh, uh, and we, we, we can do that um, as women because we have so many words um, and our words can come over in a complaining tone um, where we, we don't take time to, you know, if, if you look at a child who's learning to walk, that child gets a lot of celebration. Every time he takes a step, it's like, whoa, 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 like that. And we have our husbands who are really struggling to really make us happy. You know, they may not be making the right steps. They might be doing it not the way we expected, or they might have messed up or, or something. And what we what we are doing is complaining about all the times they did it wrong, and we are saving the celebration for the for the little ones who are now learning to walk. No, you don't. You, you, we don't get married and then learn how to be a husband and learn how to be a wife overnight. We just married. That's all. We just married. But it takes a lifetime to really learn how to be a wife. I am still learning how to be a wife. After 59 years, I'm still learning how to be a wife. And I have to ask, you know, I have to ask, how am I doing? Is that okay? You like this? You know, you know, uh, or, or, or I have to, to do these little surprises that would remember what he liked. And, and, and do I have to have joy inside of me? in order to give it to those who are around me. Otherwise, if I, if I have complaint going on inside, something is festering that's going to come out in my behavior. It's going to come out in the way that I, I throw the knife and fork to you and I throw the spoon and I say, serve yourself. And I say, no, 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 that's not the way we do it. So we want to celebrate all of life, all the seasons. Every time it changes, that's fine. There's something new to learn here. And something new to embrace there. And that's that's really what I have found that works for me. I'm grateful for the lessons that he's taught me. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, wonderful, lovely ladies for the knowledge that you have imparted to us this morning. And thank you, younger ladies, for being so open and, and free and responsive to all that has been shared. At this time, I'm going to ask Sister Pearl to just pray for the younger women on the platform. Yes. Father, we want to thank you so much that you are here with us and that you have, you have done more than we could ask or think or desire. It is you who have chosen us for this task, for this role. You know, while we had desires, some of us, you know, desired to have husbands, but, and some, some, you have, you know, in my childhood, the first lesson I learned is that marriage is not for children. <laughs> but you, you taught me how I survived that season where I was ignorant of what it meant to be a wife. 
But Lord, you are so faithful. You brought us through and you're teaching us day by day. You're changing us and you're being gracious to us. You are so forgiving. Help us not to hold people at ransom when you have forgiven us so freely. I pray, oh God, that you will teach us how to love like you love. How to forgive like you forgive. How to, how to, how to, re, how to redeem, um, our marriage over and over and over again. It's not a one time thing, but you did it for us. You showed us mercy yesterday and you show us mercy today and you're going to be there in our lives tomorrow to show us mercy again. We do not mean to fail. We do not mean to, 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 to sin. We do not mean to, to miss the mark all the time. Lord, sometimes we get afraid and then we make bad choices. But I ask you to forgive us for the bad choices that we have made and give us an, another chance to make a new beginning. Father, you see where we are right now. Revive us in the midst of our years. Lord, the younger women, Lord, who have just started their lives, who, who, who are at the stage, Lord, where they're saying, teach me how to be a wife. That is a, that is a lifelong a request. Teach me how to be a wife to the husband that you've given me. Not to somebody else, but to the husband you've given me. You know what he needs. It is you who made him. And you have made me his wife. Teach me how to minister to him. Teach me what he needs. Show me the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Show me the secret, Lord. Teach me how to get to those places that I can really um, love my husband and where I can help him to blossom, to be the man that you have called him to be. I don't want to make him into anybody, but I want you to make him into the man you want him to be. I don't want to preach to him. The preacher can do that. The pastors can do that. I just want to love him the way you want me to love him. And I ask you to teach me how to do that. And I ask you to bless this platform, Lord. I ask you to bless the ladies who have contributed here today. I ask you to bless the older women and continue, Lord, to, to equip us and empower us that we would be able to teach others, Father, even those who are yet to be born, that something we can say today, Lord, these younger children could learn, they could run with it, oh God, and they can make a difference to their world. We give you thanks for the privilege that you've given us here today. And we thank you, Lord, for, for Ruth, for Pastor Ruth, for Reverend Ruth, for, for, for initiating this, for the anointing that is upon her life, Lord, um, that you are using in so many ways. Continue to increase that, that vision that you've given her and the anointing that is upon her life for this purpose and for this season. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We thank you for these amazing, amazing, awesome older women whom you have kept thus far. Father, your word says, hitherto hath the Lord brought us. And for that today, we thank you for them. Lord, we thank you that they are still in their right minds, oh God, that they can pour into us as younger women. We thank you, dear God, for all the nuggets that they have garnered over the years, dear God, that they have been able to deposit in our lives this morning. We thank you for their faithfulness to their husbands, oh God. We thank you, dear God, that you are going to continue to reward them for the rest of their times on this earth, dear God. We pray, dear God, that all who will sit at their feet would indeed be blessed richly, would understand that there is a wealth of knowledge that these beautiful women have to pour out, dear God. I thank you for the opportunity and the privilege of having them here on this platform. God, you are such an amazing God. You have chosen them for such a time as this. You have used them throughout their lives to bring them to this moment so that what they have can be passed on. The amazing legacy, my God. The legacy 
that they are passing on is a tremendous one. And so, God, we thank you that we are able to be a part of such a legacy. We thank you for the heritage that you have risen up within them, dear God, that would be passed on to others to come. We thank you, dear God, for all that you are doing in their lives, dear God. Father God, continue to strengthen them in their bodies, dear God. Continue to keep them sharp and alert, mighty God. Continue to give them a song, dear God, a testimony, oh God. Continue to help them to be wives, dear God, that you have called them to be, Heavenly Father. God, I thank you for this moment. You are such an amazing God. We thank you for the privilege of being able to hear them, dear God, being able to clearly understand all that they have said. Father, the freedom that they have shared with us, we thank you for that freedom. We pray, dear God, that you would bless them. You would continue to cover them and overshadow them, that your angels would continue to walk with them in their going out and their coming in. Your protection, your hedge, oh God, would be around these ladies, oh God. We pray for their husbands, dear God, for those that still have their husbands with them. We thank you, dear God, for those, dear God, that their husbands have gone on to be with you. We pray that you would continue to bring comfort and we thank you that they're still open and willing to share to others, oh God. Father, continue to bless this platform. Father God, as we go into another segment in another month, dear God, I pray, dear God, that it would be even richer because of what you are going to do. And we thank you, dear God. Father, we cannot, we cannot we cannot, oh God, express enough gratitude for these amazing ladies. But God, you know them. You have seen them and you have kept them. You have brought them this far and you will continue to keep them. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Continue to protect them. Help them to know, their God, that their contribution is not in vain. Their labor is not in vain. We are very grateful and we are the better for all that they have contributed. So God, today we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Over to you, Reverend Lawrence. Amen and amen. Thank you so, so very much, Sister Maria. What an amazing session we just had. But before I do my closing comments, I want to ask the younger women. So I want to hear from you. What takeaway do you have for us today? What are you taking away? What nuggets? You may have received a lot of nuggets. You may receive nuggets that you didn't bargain for. But give us one nugget that you are taking away from this session today. Let's go quickly. Amen, amen, amen. We certainly want to thank each and every one of you. We want to thank the company of older women who have shared, Sister Pearl, Sister Sheila, Sister Velma, Sister Donami. Thank you so much for being here with us. And I want to say that our company, there are more ladies in our company, and you will hear from others as we do other sessions. Our next session will be the first Saturday in August, and we're going to be looking at how to love how do I love my children? Teach me, train me. How do I love my children, my five children, my three children, my one child? How do I love my children? That will be the first Saturday in August. All right. And we want to well, uh, ask you to join us again and, you know, extend invitation to persons who are of same age and they need to register, please, so that they can be a part of this session. Um, um, so thank you so very much. And we thank you, Reverend Brown, uh, uh, Brother Freddie, thank you so much for helping Sister Velma to join us today. Uh, we welcome you from the UK. God bless you. 
and um, we are so very grateful to have you. Thank you, younger women. Without you, we would not have been able to have this conversation. And I, you know, I believe, I know the Lord was with us. I know he, he graced us with his presence. And I know that he has saturated us with what he wanted us to receive today. So young women, do not take for granted these precious nuggets that you've received. Even um, the precious nugget of submission that we heard from Sister Sheila and Sister Donami. You know, let us be very mindful because, you know, these 255 combined years, 255 plus is the black of 59. So that's about 300. That's over 300 years of experience. And so we bless God for each and every one of you. Thank you, Moderator Maria. Thank you so much for doing an excellent job. God bless you richly indeed.